So guys, here we are. I can't believe this. How psyched am I? I have Josh from X right here today. Hey everybody. And he is going to fill me in on this i1 profiler and this little sucker. What is this? The i1 Display Pro? Yeah. yeah. Look at that. The i1 Display Pro. And you know why? I get so annoyed. This is the most annoying thing. If I'm coaching somebody or if you're putting your shots on the web or you want to show somebody something something that you want it to look the way you want it to look and you want to know that it's right, you need to work on a calibrated monitor. And if you don't, you're wasting your time. And you're wasting my time if I'm coaching you. So stop doing that. I'm fed up with that. And Caraminder's here eating a banana. Say hello, Caraminder. Hello. Okay. So um, here we go. We're going to run you through it just because it's real simple. I, I take this thing everywhere with me. I do my, we're doing my iMac right now. I also do my MacBook Pro. Um, I stick it in my bag and you should be profiling every four weeks. Yep. Every four weeks it has a little reminder so that you don't even have to be concerned about the amount of time that you spend, not whether you're profiling or not. It's going to remind you this thing's like got that built in so you got no problems there. So we're just going to run through a system. Now, you can either do basic or advanced. And knowing you guys, the basic one's very easy, right? Yeah. Hit a button. And Wizard Base walkthrough takes you through every single step very easily. Hit a bunch of buttons, you're done, mm -hmm. right? So we're going to do advanced just because I want to get, I got the man here. I want to dig into him a little bit. I want to find out why I'm pressing one thing over another. Maybe he can explain some of that as we go. So you get a better sense of what the heck's going on here which is great, but we all need one of these. If you go to ph2pro.com, hit forward slash gear, it will take you to my gear page. And there, if you click on it, you can purchase things directly from B&H Photo. And we all love B&H Photo, don't we guys? Jessica from B&H is over on the couch. She doesn't want to be seen, but I had to throw that little tidbit of information in there. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so let's go, let's do this. So we got this clicked on advanced, right? I'm going up to display and I'm gonna hit profiling. Is that That's correct? All right, there we go. Boom, this comes up, ready to roll. Now, we're going iMac. Right, so it found what screen you automatically have, and if you had a secondary monitor hooked up, it would find that too. Oh, it wouldn't? You can do either one. Yeah, you can do both. Oh, you at simultaneously? Not simultaneously. But you can do both. Yes. Okay, good. And, and we've got this little bar here. It says CCFL, is that, I, so I've got a bunch that of options describes here. describes what kind of monitor you have or how it's lit. Uh -huh. And you can go to uh, xrayphoto.com, and if you have any questions to find out, like, I don't know what monitor I have, that, that would help you out and kind of guide you to what you do have. Okay, good. So in terms of, you know, you know this, CCFL is what an iMac is. Correct. Right. right? This, this iMac, yeah. This iMac is CCFL. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I'm on my retina display over there, what would that one be? Right. That would be the wide gamut version. Wide gamut CCFL. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So what, a, and the, like the newer IMAX maybe with their wire gamma, gamma. Their wire gamma. Yeah. okay guys, so remember that. So I'm going CCFL on this one because this sucker is a little older. Uh, white point. Um, the standard we go with is D65, so that's where you're going to leave it at, and that's the default. Okay, and if you did go to one of the other ones, what would that? So if you went to D50, that's something that's used like in pre-press, uh -huh. people who send things out to have like four color printing. Okay. So they use different uh, white points, but we in the photo industry do D65. D65 in the photo industry, you guys. That's it. Keep it right there. Perfect. You got all these options over here. What daylight, temperature, native? What, we're going D65. Yeah. Okay. Luminance. You so, explain this yeah. to me. I, I know. Your right, luminance, if you're, doing, if you're doing a laptop, we recommend around 90 looms. Uh, if you're doing a desktop like this, we're going to recommend around 120 looms. And what that is, is we want it to be as bright as it has to be without being too bright. These screens are phenomenal, and this one could probably reach around 300 looms, uh, but that would oversaturate your image and make the white points kind of blow out and you'd have too much shadow detail. And we want to make sure that it's balanced the right place. So for this one, 120 looms. Okay, we're going 120, guys. 120. Uh, contrast ratio. We always stay with native. We're them. going native. Mm -hmm. You have options that you don't use, is what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> well, that you don't use. No, I don't use. Oh, we, don't, yeah, we don't want that. I don't need any of this stuff to confuse me. This is perfect. I'm still glad we're going through it. So, flare correct. I can measure if there is something going on in the room. Right, right. You that, very intelligently block the light that comes from behind. Someone who can't do that, they would use a flare correct. Okay, good. So, we don't need to worry about that because I blocked it. 
Ambient light smart control is if I'm measuring the ambient light continuously with this little gizmo. That's correct. I click that, but I don't do that. I don't. You do don't that continuously, yeah, yeah, right. Because you're gonna you calibrate a little bit more frequently than other people. Uh, so if you left that plugged in, that would make sure that it continually controls the screen brightness versus the room brightness. According to the room light. Okay, so I'm not gonna do that because I don't do that. Enough. I'm just hitting hitting next now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now from here, we recommend all defaults. Um, if you do a video setup, there are some other things that you want to do. So if you do very heavy video editing on this computer, you, again, you go to the X-Ray blog and we can give you a few different kind of steps. But for what you're doing, default is the best. Okay, that's fine. And gamma 220. Yes. 2.2. That's what I meant. Sorry. 2.2, guys. Um, okay, just hit next. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna do patch size. Right, from here, today we're gonna do a small patch read just because it's faster and we're gonna try not to make people fall asleep. But we have well, small, Well, we can pause the, and, and do it and then come back. We can do that too, Yeah, whichever you want. Let me do medium, I did, I, want, I, I wouldn't mind trying medium, let's go nuts. <laughs> <All right. laughs> nuts and 211 patches 211 of color. 211 patches. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go nuts. Now when I hit next, it's gonna do, it's going to take you to one more screen. Okay, hold on. Let's hit next. <laughs> and then right. when you hit start oh, measurement. Oh, now I'm going to hit start measurement. That's okay, and I automatic display control is clicked. Mm -hmm. And adjust brightness, contrast, and dark. No, I don't want that manual. I want them to do it. Correct. Yeah, I, I don't want to touch it. I don't no, want to screw it up. Don't yeah. screw it. So I'm going to pause. We're going to do this. We're going to come back when it's done. All right, here we go. Pausing. Everybody, everybody stay tuned, people. All right, guys, we're back. So it did all sorts of stuff. And I had to, you have to take it, flip this sucker over, put it on your screen, and then when it's done, you take it back off and you flip it over, and now it does an ambient light reading, so it's reading the room and setting the, the thing accordingly. Is that what I'm getting? Yeah, it's going to set the screen brightness to the room brightness, so that way, like I said before, your images aren't oversaturated or too blown out, uh, and they're also not too dark. Perfect. Okay, so we hit next, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're all geared up here. Let's hit next, and now we got a profile. Right, so, so now I can name this sucker. Right, you're going to name it. You can name it All right. whatever you want. Uh, it, um, some people name it by the environment. So this is your studio computer, not your home computer. Okay. So this could be the Shebang Meister's Lair. Obviously. <laughs> I got it. Dude, there's there a lot go. of words. <laughs> All right, that's what we're naming it. This is the Shimbang Meister's Lair profile, mm -hmm. and we got four weeks. It's going to remind me to do it again. Mm -hmm. Ambient, we're keeping this off because I'm not leaving it plugged I'm down. not leaving it plugged in. And then you're going to and then create, and save. create and save. And then, okay, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's just if I'm using the, all right, we don't need that, right. and we're done. Now, one of the cool parts is on the screen on the right-hand side, you see a graph of what the color space of your profile is but there's a little tiny silhouette of kind of like a person. If you click on that, that's where you see the before and after. So you can see kind of what you've gained by doing this calibration. And there's a number of different ones that show the before and after. In the video, but it, we it might didn't not do see a it. ton. Yeah. Right, because we just calibrated. Well, we calibrated it. What we did was, guys, just so you know, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. We just did a practice run, so I wasn't totally clueless when I did this. It was and me. when I did the practice run, it was insanely different mm -hmm. when I clicked the before and after. It was crazy, right? right? And a lot of people will notice that. And uh, now I'm not seeing the difference, which means it was calibrated. Good. Yep. And then that's it. You're done. And but then, guys, when you do it, fiddle with this. This is cool. The before and after is the coolest thing. You go, whoa, I've been looking at the shots like this the whole time, and they're actually like this. Right? right? <laughs> it's a problem. Okay. What else do we have to tell them? That's it. Is there anything else that you want to say? You people. B and H is people. awesome. B and H is awesome. We love B and H. I call B and H the toy store. X ray is the best. <laughs> X ray is the best. We like the X ray guys. We have another product, a passport color checker. Do you want to talk about that real quick? Uh, Let's start talking about it while I get it. So there's three steps when it comes to the calibration process. Uh, there's what you shoot in the field. There's what you see in your screen. And then there's what comes out on your printer if you do have a printer, which I hope you do. Uh, the what you shoot in the field is the passport, that's the first step. So it's gonna be something that you put into your shot and it's kind of like reading the colors in your screen because it's gonna show your camera what the appropriate colors are. So shooting in the field in that lighting environment, you can then set the standard for your camera the same way that you're setting the standard for your monitor when you do a calibration. 
So what you shoot in the field is what you see on your screen, is hopefully what comes out on your printer if you do a profile for your printer, which again is very similar to the patch that you're about to see. All right, so here we oh, go. Oh, I have all sorts of operation going on here. All right, so. So this is, this is a three-step color chart. This is awesome. Yeah. Yes. So okay. this is very popular uh, in video uh, because you're, you have your three densities of gray, your black, white, and gray. Um, so they use this one a lot. Mm -hmm. The passport is kind of the small brother to what we've all seen as the, the color checker classic, which is 24 patches of color. It looks like this, but a little bit larger. So you would put this into your shot, uh, take the first shot in that same lighting environment, pull it out, and then there's a software that goes with this. It's going to help you kind of do the first steps of your editing process. Make sure that everything looks the same from that specific camera in that, is that this? environment. That's what this software is. That's what software is, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, awesome. So if I put this in my shot and use that software, would I be clicking on different colors? It, to... It's actually going to find it for you. The software is very, very advanced. You're just going to put that in the shot, and then it's going to, you're going to size it to this image, and it finds all the patches for you. Wow. Software is advanced, people. We have advanced software here. I'm going to start using this and try it. I'm going to let you guys know what I think because I've been, it's been sitting in there and I, I didn't fiddle with it. I usually go by my eye on a calibrated monitor, which I like. That's good. But I think getting there a little bit faster, and especially this is probably very helpful if you're in different lighting environments, if very you're running cool. around. If you're on the move, if you're running, you need one of these, I yes. would think. Yes, always. Um, but I, I mean... I run and I don't really, you know, I do everything afterwards, but maybe this would speed up my workflow. The, the most important to me is the monitor calibration because yeah. you cannot edit an image accurately until you see it accurately. Yeah. So you want to make sure you see it accurately. Okay. Well, Josh from x -Rite, thank you for coming by the studio and hanging out with me. Yeah, I appreciate it. And yeah. you guys, thanks for watching. We're going to, uh, we just, I just want everybody to be firing on all cylinders. And if you're missing this mountain calibration, you're not even firing on quarter cylinders. You need to fire on all cylinders. So this is the way to do it. All right. Until next time, guys, we will see you. And um, thanks for watching.